Hey, sorry guys, the blue light just kicked on and T5 shut off, so uh, I was adjusting with the camera. Hey, what's up, Reefers? It has been a while since I have done a proper 45 gallon tank update, so I think it's about time. So a lot has been developing and let's start from the very obvious. So right in the back right, you see that I have some controller probe sitting right there and these are from eCoral. I've been testing these uh, eCoral controller for a little bit over a month and a half right now and they are everything I've imagined to be and a little bit more. I've been really happy with them and I'm not going to go too deep into them simply because I plan to do a more proper unboxing and review uh, in the coming weeks so I'm going to leave that to that. But um, there's a reason why the probes are at the top. The next thing that's a little bit obvious, maybe at least to me, is the left column. I was never satisfied with the left column and I cannot say I still I, I am, but I have been tweaking the left column as you see right here. So before all these gold torches sitting at the bottom left here, but I thought it looked a little bit too messy, I finally uh, addressed this section and I some of you may remember that the Christmas tree rock used to be over here, but it never quite fit in. Uh, I tried a different spot for the Christmas tree rock and again, it just doesn't fit in. So I, for now, I just kind of tucked it back there and until I can find a good place for it. And I may again just sell this little guy because I just couldn't find a space for it. Coming back over here, we got all the torch, uh, all the torch in, here, in the spot. We got the um, <laughs> supposedly Holy Grail torch, they either lost its color or just never the Holy, uh, Holy Grail torch. I actually used to be pretty neon gold slash neon green, but it has lost color since that's been sitting in the back. We got the Indigo torch on the left side, and then we got the Aussie gold torch in the back right. That's looking really nice. Now, I'm still not super happy with this portion simply because I feel like the color does not really pop in that section everything seems to be of a pitch uh, a peach or tank color so I'm still looking to do something in that, that section whether it's adding a little bit of zoas or stepping away from the gold torch and uh, try some other corals in that area one thought is possibly just removing all the corals at the top and just try some SPS in that section until the large tank is up and running. And a little bit lower down here on the column, I started planting some zoas here, but in hindsight, uh, I should have planted something more colorful like the other chaos, um, just something with strong red or strong green of rastas uh, to make it pop a little bit on the left side. But speaking of pop, check out the kryptonite candy king coral. It has really exploded. Right now we got about half, well, half a sphere, a hemisphere worth of uh, these neon green, neon green uh, trumpets. So I may look into fragging a little bit out from the bottom, but we'll see, uh, we'll see. Because I really like how puffy and like a uh, hemisphere looks right now. And coming over here, you see that the fat hand dendril is looking really happy. It's looking really happy and there's actually a really sad story about it. It's because my planted freshwater tank is going down to shitter. It's looking really bad. I'm fighting some algae in there. I had to crank up the, uh, the CO2 and I OD'd a little bit. And some of the uh, red uh, the red cherry shrimp died and as they died, I popped the shrimp <laughs> into the fed head dendro. That's why that guy is looking so plump and happy. Uh, but hopefully I get the planted tank back under control soon. Um, but that is a big unknown right now. I've been toying with the idea of like restarting the tank or just converting that planted tank to another lino tank. We will see. Coming over here, the Zoa Island is doing well. Um, ever since I started running the uh, media reactor in the sump uh, and getting the class A under control, the all the coal. All the zoas that have not been opening up, for example, the uh, other chaos and then the fruit loop and the uh, king Midas over there, uh, they were kind of touchy. A lot of times they were not opening fully or the skirt is kind of rolled up. But ever since I started running GFO a little bit in this tank and I assumed the phosphate is under control, these guys has been 
opening plump and happy. So that is the good news. And again, this is thanks to Eat Sleep Reef. He gave the tip that, you know, if the zoo is not doing too hot, they're not opening up, check the phosphate. A lot of times, maybe it's the elevated phosphate that's causing it. And sure enough, in this case, phosphate was most likely a little bit high. And once they're under control, the zoo is happy one more time. I'm still getting used to not seeing a large Monty Poro cap in this section of the tank. I'm still getting used to it. But I tried uh, fragging it up and then adding a couple frags to this tank. For example, we got one piece right here. You you notice that it's really beat up. That's because this was over here, a little bit higher up. So the anemone is touching it. Space Invader Sweeper is touching it. So I kind of just pull it in this crack. Uh, I'm not too sure what to do with it yet. That's why it's kind of sitting in this peculiar position, but there it is. Uh, also that piece right there, I thought that would be kind of a decent spot, but the anemone is still reaching it, so <laughs> that may not be ideal as well. And the third piece is actually back there. That piece is doing quite well since nothing is stinging it. So hopefully that will start... Oh man, the light just came off. Let's uh... Let's see if we can get a good setting on this. Right now, okay, it's just a radiant, so we're entering the Moonlight period. Hey, sorry guys, the blue light just kicked on and T5 shut off, so uh, I was adjusting with the camera to make sure uh, the white balance pick up what my eyes see, and I think this is pretty accurate. So we'll go with it. And this is actually kind of cool, because like I don't really show you guys what the tank looks like uh, when it's just a tin blue like this, so I figure it's a... Uh, that's a nice change of pace. Okay, let's continue with the update. So, I wanted to tell you guys about the Rose Bobotum Anemone. It seems like it takes up every, sing every, every last bit of room that I give it. Basically, it was about two-thirds the size before. And um, as soon as it finds that, okay, you know what? Um, <laughs> there's a little bit more room for me to grow. It just grows and kind of fit into the gap. And that's what I did here. And swinging over here on the, on the rock, you see that the rainbow bubble to the enemy came out for hiding. It was actually on the back side of the rock before, but I think it just yesterday that it decided to move back to the front, which is really welcomed. The black widow found its way deep, deep inside of frog spine branches. Uh, I shared this on my Instagram at inappropriate reefer, and it has been in there for about three weeks now. The funny thing is that it's actually, it actually seems to be really happy in there. It's puffy, it's healthy, it's growing. Um, it does not seem to be bothered by the frog spawn. The frog spawn does not seem to be bothered by it. Look, it's just the frog spawn is puffy, opening, and not retracting. So as long as they're both happy, it's all good. However, if the black widow does wander a little bit into some place I can easily grab, I'll probably grab it and move it back onto the rock right here. But as of now, um, yeah, black widow and enemy is living with the frog spawn, uh, living within the frog spawn. Now, speaking of Euphilius, the Gold Warhammer is not a core that I talk about often because it's kind of there. But I'm pretty glad that it's been working out so well because usually uh, Gold Warhammer or Warhammer in general is still touch and go. A lot of people have issue with it, a lot of people have it not growing much. But I feel like the Gold Warhammer in this case has been working out really well for me. It has grown a little, I'll say like um, since the time I've had it, it probably grown maybe one third the size. i uh, just really happy with it. Just wish it's a little bit more gold, but they are pretty hard to come by, so I'm happy with that. The finger leather I thought it was gonna take off, but they're just pretty much just holding steady. Which is nice because I feel like uh, the pro proportion is pretty good for the finger leather right now in comparison to the rest of the tank. Uh, if it gets a little too large, it may look kind of goofy. But uh, I'm still kind of questioning this whole section right here, even though I just reworked it. I feel like it's not quite there yet. So I may look to replace these, the go torch with other finger letters, um, or just go with SPS. I don't know. I don't know. Um, well, by the time you're seeing this, I will be at Reef Palooza. So I will be keeping an eye out on some interesting. Uh, Interesting corals with really impactful color, and we'll see how it goes. And the Xenia, I know a lot of you guys warned me about Xenias, 
Xenia's is surprisingly holding steady. Uh, it pulsed once in a while. It seems like when the blue light comes on, it starts pulsing. As you can see, it started moving before under the white light, it's just not doing much. And it also pulses whenever I dose the tank with uh, phytoplankton. Now, when I dose the tank with phytoplankton, it gets really happy and it's not pulsing like crazy. Right now, it the blue just started coming on and it slowly started moving. That's one of the weird observations I've made um, that my colony of Xenia actually grow. Uh, however, next to Xenia, you see the uh, jack o' lanterns. Uh, tiny little frag, but it started growing onto the rock, um, which I'm really happy about. That means it's doing well. And the uh, orange Florida Recordia actually doubled in size. Uh, the other one just detached and floated around the tank. I have no idea where it is. Looking back here, you see the uh, Rasta uh, doing really well on the Christmas tree with Warm Rock. And one really weird thing, guys. I think I have a new rank, man. Look at that white thing. You see it right there underneath the Xenia? Yes, I have a little bit of Xenia back there. I love Xenia. Uh, that was actually in the front of the tank before. I have not seen that type of other new rank or flat worm. Um, usually, new rank is bad news. But, dude, I. I really don't know what it is. Like somebody was actually Tom Tom Reeve was over with uh, that with his mother over to pick up one of the Monty Fragger today, and I noticed it on the front side of the tank. It just like a, it almost like at first I thought, wait, what is that? Is that meat of some sort? Like did something die and left some meat behind? Uh, it almost looked like snail meat, except it's pure white. But I noticed that it's actually crawling to the back now. What is this? If you know what it is, please let me know. I feel like. At first I thought maybe it's like some dead snail, but that's not it, obviously, since it's moving. And I thought maybe sponge, but again, it's moving. So I, dude, I don't know, man. Let me know if you know, if you know what that is, and if I should uh, just pull it out of the, of the tank. This is really weird, I've never seen this. The Space Invader Pectinia, see, after all these years, I finally learned how to pronounce it. That and the Kryptonite, Candy Cane, uh, some of the brightest thing in this tank. Uh, the Space Invader is looking really good. I think it grew a little bit. Um, Sometimes it puffs up, sometimes it's a little bit skinnier, uh, but I think like when it's puffing up, it's a lot happier. And recently it has been sending out the um, feeder tentacles and sweeper tentacles pretty often, so I think it is happy. This building skeleton right now has three yellow eyes, um, before it was two and a half, so it's definitely growing a little bit. Uh, the Redactus is growing really slowly right here, but they are growing regardless. And speaking of Redactus or mushrooms, let's check out the frack rack. Look back there, do you see what I see? We got a lot of Jawbreaker babies. They just randomly started popping up. Uh, so we got, let's see. I think I counted five before. One of them is really tiny in top part. So we got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Yep, five baby Jawbreakers. Um, the largest one is already going to Telegram Gym, who has been helping me out with um, a lot of stuff. So. I would love for him to have one of those guys. But the other ones, I'm probably gonna frag and I move one or two pieces down to the main rock and then probably put the other ones on sale. And I think they should be ready to go. Um, well, if you want them loose, they're pretty much ready to go right now. But if them, if you want them on a frag plug and stuff like that, it may still be a month or two months out um, until they get a little bit larger. So I know they won't just kind of float off and disappear. So if you're interested and you're local, let me know. And you see that I got quite a few pieces of SPS in the back ready to go. They just need a space. Um, maybe there, maybe somewhere else, maybe the 150 when it's ready to go. I don't know. And you see from the top, the frag tank is a mess, dude. I got a mix of like, well, obviously I got a bunch of SP, uh, the GSP going out of control. I got some Gorgonian growing off the glass. This is ridiculous. And I got SPS and I got quite a bit of Zoas that I need to place on the tank. But, yeah, let's leave it at that. I, I don't want to look at a frag tank, it's such a mess. And sliding back here, I'm not sure if you guys can actually see it. So there's the uh, Hypnophora, I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, it's the, I think it's called, a, it's the Jason Fox Limelight, if you need a name. It is a really, really bright Hypnophora. It's on a plug, it's kind of weird. It's kind of like, almost like a fung fungi, uh, a plate. I don't know how to put it. Like, there's no room for me to put it right at this moment, but, it's so bright, it looks beautiful. I didn't want to get rid of it, so I just kind of tucked it in the back, uh, waiting for a good room for it, or until the 150 gets up and going, so I can pop it off right there. 
So you may be hearing a really <laughs> annoying buzzing sound and that is coming from the Radeon G3 right here. It sounds like the fan, um, the CPU fan is hitting a wire or something like that. And it's been going on for about two weeks now and I really need to address it. Uh, so right now the solution is I feel like if you smack anything, it just fix things up. But that will last for about a minute or two and then it'll start buzzing again. I feel like maybe a wire is kind of really too close to the fan is, and the fan is chopping it or something. I'm not sure. Uh, so basically on my to-do list is taking the Radeon off of the light fixture uh, and then opening it up, just seeing exactly what is bothering it and then addressing it. I just got get, 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 damn, that was annoying. I did not realize how loud it is until I uh, kind of bang it. That's bad. Okay, so that pretty much covered all the what's new of these 45 gallon tank. I uh, probably won't go into the sum in this update simply because it's getting holy crap, it's getting long. Every single time I start talking about my tank, I just keep going on and on. I apologize. Um, the bicolor blenny has not really made an appearance in this video, but trust me, that little guy is still in there. Uh, I think he just went to sleep because it's so late. It's always up in up a center and swimming around and the Yasha Gobi's in the back. Everybody's doing well in terms of fish. They're doing good. Most of the changes in the past couple weeks has been corals. And honestly, I have not touched it too much except for the left column. I feel like at this point, the tank is kind of pretty much just running itself at this point. I'm just kind of monitoring it, doing water change once in a while and still trying to figure out what the heck I want to do for the left hand side. If you have any, if you have any feedback, if you have any suggestions on what I could do on the left side, whether it's um, keeping it like this, replacing go torch or something else, just uh, let me know. Cause I, at this point, I man, I've been trying so many things. I'm really not quite sure what else I could try. Um, I don't know, man. I'm just looking for the inspiration. Be my muse, guys. Be my muse. All right, that's that. I'm gonna cap it off right here. Um, again, at this, at, when you're watching this right now, I am at Reepapalooza in New Jersey, and I'm probably exhausted from yesterday, but I'm probably having a excellent time right now, chilling with some of you guys. So this is kind of weird. It's kind of like an inception moment. Uh, but I'm sure I'm enjoying the trip, and I'm sure that I am enjoying hanging out with you guys even more. Oh, check this out. This this is kind of cool. Actually, I didn't talk about it. The Gorgonian has finally grown out of the water. It's um, permanently sticking out of the water. It just get pushed down once in a while by the water flow. See the tip right here? Just the tip. That is exposing. <laughs> All right, that's that, guys. Um, if you are at Reef Blue Set, New Jersey right now, I'll be seeing you really soon. And for the rest of you guys, have an excellent rest of the week. And I will see you guys hopefully midweek. I've been trying to go go to um, two videos a week. We'll see how it works out, see how long it lasts. And um, yeah, see you guys next week.